literature lesson. Thank you so much, Michael, for that rendition. I just wanted to sing along with you. I'm sure other people felt the same. Our scripture lesson today is from Exodus 16, chapters 15 through 17. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread of the Lord that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much and some little. May the Lord add to the reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. What a beautiful music. We definitely enjoy it, Brother Michael. Thank you for the music, beautiful music and also songs. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Merciful Father, as we are getting into your word, grant us your blessings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And give us teachable spirit to learn what you would like to teach us. Help us to hope from here with your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I remember Pastor Jacob was preaching about the health message last time from the 15th chapter of Exodus. And we are just going to the next chapter. I put the title, Suppers are slain as many as the sword. This is the slang, right? Suppers have slain as many as the sword. Is that true? I was wondering about that one when I saw the slogan. And the book of Exodus, 16th chapter, gives an explanation for that one. And I was, I was watching the quote. The quote was, the deepest need of man is not food. What is that? Is that true? Hmm. No, I couldn't, I couldn't understand to begin with. The deepest need of man is not food and clothing and shelter. Important as they are, it is God. That's what C.S. Lewis wrote. So my question is, is it possible to agree this one? What is our deepest need? Okay. When I was turning to the eating and the diet session, I found some quotes. Before we get into 16th chapter, just look at that one. Eating is necessary, but cooking is an art. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes we don't know which one to put where. Now, I've seen people, they put things Instead of coriander, they put some other thing. And then the whole curry or whatever they cook, it goes in a different taste and collapses everything. So it is true, eating is necessary, but the cooking is an art. We need to learn how to cook, right? Everybody cannot learn, but then that's a learning experience too. Okay, next one. Strange that three score meals make what kind of people? <laughs> Round people. <laughs> Round people. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we boast, hey, I went to the restaurant, I ate how many course? Five course of meals. I'm glad, uh, you know, I don't see anybody, you know, according to the, according to the slang. Strange that three score meals makes round people. Okay. Then, another quote, I like it very much. <clears throat> Diets are for people who are thick and tired of it. <laughs> you 
You know, sometimes we go and talk to the talk to the people about diet, those who are very thin and bony. And they might be wondering what happened to this fellow. You know, I've been trying to gain weight, but he's coming and talking of what? Diet. Right? Okay. Another quote, very interesting. Taste makes what? Taste. Huh? Taste makes waste. What is waste? You are becoming wider and wider. Round. Huh? Round? <laughs> taste makes waste. That's true. Sometimes only the six inches of taste makes what? You know, that's what people are slave to. And they want tasty food all the time. Keep on switching to restaurants. And they said, no, I don't like that restaurant. Let me try that one. No, I don't like the way you cook. And what's happening today? Taste makes waste. Overeating will make you thick on your stomach. Overeating. Sometimes, that's what's happening today. When we see the food is so tasty, we say, okay, let me put little more, little more, little more, right? <laughs> And then we think, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do two more rounds, extra jogging. Then it will become all right. And uh, what we see there, it will bring big stomach. And uh, I like the quote, what they put, health clubs makes a fortune at our expense. Today, thousands of health clubs are there. And they definitely make money. And I know someone, one neighbor, he faithfully pays at least $95 per month for the family to go and do the exercise. I asked him how many month, how many days did you go in a month? Oh, last month I couldn't go even one day. And this month I'm trying to go, but still I'm not able to. Health clubs makes good money. What do the Bible teach us all these things? You know? And I was reading about Henry the Eighth. I don't know how many of you know the story of Henry VIII. Henry VIII, who ruled the king, England, and he married only six wives, and he was about to marry altogether eight. And he's the one who stood against the Catholicism. The man who stood for some time with the principles, the point came, he started eating more. And he became obese. That's what happens in life. Sometimes you may eat more, sometimes you may not eat. You may go either direction. But the Bible, you know, gives a clear picture what to do. You know, the waist of Henry the Eighth, 54 inches. Can you believe? I'm sure no one is here 54. You know, you go 32, 34, 36. Think about 54. And today we see people, you know, growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally what happens? And they go through a challenging time. That's what happened to Henry VIII. And finally they had to move in a mechanical way so that he can move around. And finally, he passed away, early age. The Bible is giving a very important lesson. It is true we heard from the book of Exodus chapter 15. Last time, Pastor Jacob spoke. God is our healer. And God wants to teach one more lesson in this chapter. The Bible tells in the book of Exodus chapter 16, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel, what did they do? Complained against Moses at wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread of the full, 
for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with what? Hunger. What did they eat? What did they do in Egypt? They ate meat. How much? Farts. Farts! <laughs> Not in the plates. They ate in farts. Lavishly they ate. You know, when you read Egyptian uh, food and diet, they got plenty of fish from the Nile River. And also they ate so much meat. And uh, when you go into the backslides, that's what you see that. And they hunted so much and they wanted to eat more meat. Especially, the history says the rich class people, they ate more. Why? You know, the poor class people, they cannot afford to buy so much food and meat. But the rich class people, what did they do? And they bought so much meat. So this, the children of Israel, when they came to, when they settled in Egypt, they ate so much meat. And they ate, and they ate. And now, where are they? They are in the wilderness. And they are in the wilderness, they didn't have that kind of meat to eat. What you will see in the wilderness? And the Bible tells that now when the people complained, they complained against whom? Moses and Aaron. Can you see that one? Many times we complain against our pastors, our leaders. But we do not realize that we are complaining against God. And here comes they complained and saying that one, you know, you brought us here to kill us. So that means they strongly believe that food is the only one can make them to survive. And ask anybody today, as common people, why do you work? What's the point of work? Why do you do two, three jobs? And they plainly say, we want food on the, someone said, on the table. We want food on the table, then roof on the head, clothes on the back. You know, that's the common saying. That means we strongly believe to sustain on this earth, we need to have what? Food. Is that contradict to the contradiction to the Bible? Is it contradic contradiction to the word of God? Is it contradiction to our God? We need to think about that one. You know, that's what I was pondering when I was preparing this message as a health message. And the Bible says, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it. And his anger was aroused. Why God has to get angry? What's the feeling? It's not a right feeling. They were able to remember, though they were slaves, they worked hard, and they were able to eat good enough. Their pots were full of meat, and they can have a happy life. And here comes, they come to the wilderness, and they are sitting in the hot sun. Every day when they look at the uh, outside, there is nothing. And they look for up, it's sun shining, but there is not enough food to eat. And they wonder how the day is going to be. What, what's going to be tomorrow? And they were perplexed. In that situation, they were upset and angry. And they were complaining. Why these people had to bring us here? We had a better life over there. You know, how many times, even in our Christian life, you know, we think that, well, I accepted God in my life. I accepted God in many ways. Why am I going through all these things? My life is like a wilderness. 
But one thing we should never forget what the Bible says. God heard. God heard what they were saying. And today, when we go through situations like this, we need to be careful. Our God is hearing whatever we speak. You know, the words what they were speaking, it's nothing wrong in it. It is their emotional crisis. What they were going through. But those words are, those words were not uplifting their faith. It is not encouraging somebody. And the Bible says, they came to the final word. They didn't give praise to God. That's the bad part. You know, they could have asked Moses and Aaron saying that one, why don't you ask God to feed us? Why don't you ask God us to take care of us in this situation? Instead, what did they say? If only we had died. That means what? They want to make conclusion about themselves. They were saying, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if, if only we had died in the wilderness. What were they saying? If there is no food, it's better to die. Whatever I want, if it's not death, let me die. Why? That's what made God angry. How quickly we forget how God guided us in the past. Now that's why we sing the song. Count your blessings. What we need to do? <laughs> do we have time for that one? Name them one by one. And it will surprise you for what Lord, what Lord has done. Many times that's what I do. The God is the mighty God who guided me. It is not by my wisdom and knowledge. It is by his wisdom and his power guided me so far. He's able to guide me in the future also. God is a very particular God whom we worship. He, want, he wanted us to look for his power. He wanted us to obtain his mercy and grace as we want to be said. And that's what they didn't do, the children of Israel. They wanted to make a conclusion. Okay, God, it's enough. We enjoyed like that. That's more than enough. Did God call them to just to eat pots of meat? And that's the same question comes to us today. Did God call us to just to eat and be merry? And to just want to wear the nice clothes and go to church and go home and do nothing? What is the purpose of God's calling? That was the purpose of God's calling. And God wanted to teach us something. You know, many times we think once you come to the Lord, once you know Jesus Christ, Christianity, everything should be fine. Then why do you recite Psalm 23rd chapter? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Why do you recite that one? Was David's life was always pleasant? You know, these are the lessons is coming before us. The Bible tells here, then the Lord said to Moses, okay, you know, that's the beautiful part, I like it. Okay, it is true, they didn't murmur against God to begin with, they murmured against to Moses and Aaron, and but here comes God. What is saying? Okay. These people are like this. What I'm going to do? What is he saying? Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Can this happen? You know, when I think about this one, what, are, what the lesson I learned from this one, what is impossible with men is possible with whom? With God. You know, that's the lesson comes to us today. 
It is true they are covering. They forgot I am the one brought them out of Egypt. I brought them to take care of them. I kept this test for them to seek my power because my power is the one the earth is orbiting, the sun is shining, the moon is giving light, the stars on the sky. I know how many stars in the sky. I named everything. I know the season. I am the creator of all these things. I just want to see, will they experience my power coming to me and saying, God, this is what we need. But instead, what do they do? They murmur against me. The children of God this morning, this afternoon, the same message comes to us. And today, we see that the world is murmuring against God. And the Bible tells and the people shall go out and gather certain quota every day and they may test them. And I may test them, sorry, whether they will walk in my law or not. So, did God give, how it's connected, the law and the food, how that could be connected? How the law and the food could be connected? Did God give any law to them? We know the book of Genesis talks, but you shall not eat flesh with its life, that its blood, it's a law. But what is the law in the book of Genesis 16 chapter? You know, the book of Genesis, Exodus 16 chapter gives a different one. God wants to test them because the Bible tells, he gives food to what? How many creatures? All creatures, right? Every creature. Can you believe a whale need how many tons of food per day? <laughs> Five tons of food per day. They have to eat. Think about the birds and the creatures. Which man could satisfy them? And the Bible tells he gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Amen. God's love endures forever. And the Bible tells very clearly, they went and gathered all the food every day. Even now, at some place in, in Africa, it's called Angola or something, people are still receiving manna in that place. And God was providing manna to them how many years? The end of the chapter, it tells, they were eating manna, how many years? 40 long years. And God wants to teach the law. What kind of law they, God wants to teach to them? Very clearly we see that God wants to teach them something. Six days they have to go and get manna. On the seventh day they have to take a rest. Why God is so particular about his law? You know, this is what I would like to keep connecting with the power of God and the call of God. Why God has called us on this earth? Why God saved us from sin to salvation? Why God wants to recognize us his children? You see that one. He's a very systematic God. A loving God. They all went to collect manna every morning and they collected homers and they brought it and they grind it and they ate. Some people, what did they do? They collected more. What is that? You know, when you get something free, what you do? You collect more. What did Moses say? And don't collect it more. You collect it as much you can eat. You know? Good thing those days they didn't have all those medications, you know, to clear your stomach and things like that. Just what is that? Heartburn and things like that. And these people collected more, and what happened next day? It stunk. Stinky smell. But God told one thing on the sixth day. On the sixth day, you collect twelve. 
to double amount. On the seventh day, what happened? Nothing happened. It was fresh. This is the one law God wanted to teach the children of Israel how many years? 40 years. Now I remember back in those days studying in uh, our boarding school. They didn't cook on the Sabbath day. They cooked everything by Friday evening. Because they taught us how to keep the Sabbath holy. What is the importance of keeping Sabbath holy? The importance of keeping Sabbath holy is you are reconnecting with your Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because He is our Creator, our Redeemer. And He wanted us to experience His power. When you really read the book of Ezekiel, what the, Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel tells us, I am the Lord who sanctifies you. I have the same attitude of the book of Ezekiel. But that's a very precious book. That's why I'm doing the prophecy class on the book of Ezekiel. You know, I am the Lord who sanctifies you. That means here we see that I am the Lord who provides to you. I am the Lord who sanctifies to you. I am the God who can take care of you. That's what God wants to give that assurance this morning. When you come to the point of health, God wants to teach something very important. Six days you shall work. On the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And that day what do you do? You take rest. And today the world what we live is a world of Egypt. In Egypt what they did? They worked all the time and they ate and died. And today the world is willing to do that one. They want to eat and all the time, because they want to eat all the time, they want to work all the time. They don't want to give rest to the body. They don't want to give rest to the mind. And they don't want to give rest to anything. You go to their home or anywhere. You go any restaurants on the weekends, it's full, overflowing. Do we see that one? Today, do, do we see that one? What happened in Egypt? Now I happened to visit a, a family one day. And uh, when I went to visit the patient, and here comes a couple of young men sitting on the table. They had a big pot. And the, the big pot is like more like a five gallon pot. The, Five gallon pot was filled with what? Crabs. And they take one crab after another crab and they were eating. And they were eating. And I was sitting up for 40 minutes talking with the patient. And that fellows were eating and eating and I was wondering what's happening there. And they were putting like you know the waste. It's keep growing, keep growing. And I asked, you know, what's happening there? Well, they came from here to just to eat. Grabs. And I asked, well, oh, okay, why what they get in New York? No. Here in Maryland, we get plenty of grabs. So that's why they come here just to eat grabs. What's happening today? You know, today in the modern world, the food also kept in a modern way. You go to the big restaurants. You know, you eat and drink and eat and drink. I remember going to the meeting, uh, going to do the memorial service last, last month. And they told me, don't eat anything, we have plenty of food. And when I went there, I saw everything made out of crab. And I said, what can I eat today? And I told my wife, don't wait for me, you carry on your eating. I don't want to come home and eat. And she agreed that one. Good thing she left some food uh, when I came home. And uh, then finally I saw some french fry. I said, okay, I got some french fry to eat at least. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so I went and took the french fry. I put it in my mouth. It's full of salt. <laughs> and full of salt. And what's happening today? Full of salt full of sugar and full of oil and full of unwanted meat every place you go. 
every place you go. You know, God gave simple manna. You eat simple food, you'll get simple disease like cold and cough. If you eat rich food, you'll get rich diseases, tumor, cancer, boils, all kinds of diseases. That's what you read in the book of Deuteronomy. And there is no cure for that one. People say, doctor may say, there is a cure for all those things. There is no cure, friends. There is no cure. Once it comes, you say goodbye to the world. That is the wise decision. If you want to prolong with believing modern medications, you are ruining your life more than what you are. And that's what God wants to teach them. God wants to teach them to experience his power. And God wants to teach them what, to, what life they have to live and keep the Sabbath holy. And that is the lesson God wants to teach. And today, how we are doing, you know? They didn't believe in God. If they didn't, because they didn't believe in God, what do you see there? The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered <coughs> according to your entire number from 20 years old and above will reach Canaan. You know, if you have the attitude, if I have an attitude of complaining and grudging against God, what happens? Psychologically, when you complain, what happens? Psychologically, when you murmur, what happens? Right? These are the things we know what's happening in the world. But at the same time, when we have an optimistic idea, when we have a positive way of thinking, when you experience the power of God, you can go forward. That is the good health message I would like to share it with you. I want to end with one story. There was frog and a scorpion, both friends. The, the, the scorpion always used to come and talk to the frog. Scorpion had a desire to cross the river to go on the other side. Because the scorpion, tired of eating food on one side, so the scorpion wanted to go to the other side. Came to the shore and his friend, frog, frog came. Scorpion said, can you take me to the other shore? And the frog said, you know, we talk very nicely. I love to take you, but your attitude is very bad. You know, your character is very bad. Scorpion asked, what attitude? You know, you have the attitude of what? Stinging somebody. I can carry you, but you will stick me in the middle of the way. I don't want to take that one. The scorpion said, I promise to you, I will not do that. Then frog said, okay, because you promised, I am going to carry you. So it's a long river, big river. It was taking, the frog was taking. When the, when the shore was about to come, what did scorpion do? Stay. And the frog said, I told you, you will not change your attitude. And the scorpion jumped on the shore. But what happened to the frog? Why I'm saying that story? How many times as I built these people, we heard health message from the spirit of prophecy? How many times God taught us how to keep the Sabbath holy? How many times God wants to extend his power to show his power to us? What are we doing? Are we like that scorpion? Think about that one. The final scripture, John 3, 65, then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes me will never be thirsty. You know, the Lord provided 40 years manna. And the same Lord is provided to you and me. May God bless each and every one of us. 
to trust in him and to follow in him. We'll continue this message next time. God bless you. Thank you. As the world is believing in their strength, in their wisdom, in their knowledge, as the world is waiting to fill their stomach, that's the only goal to live on this earth. We come to the Lord who said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceed out from the mouth of the Lord. God, you wanted the children of Israel to rely on you and your word and to show your mighty power to the world. Lord, in these last days, you have been calling us to do the same thing, O Lord. Help us not to forget that one. Help us to abide in you. Abide in your words. And to live a life which brings glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. God of heaven, thank you for the privilege of worshiping you in Hopeside Community Church today. I pray for everyone who walked in today, Lord. I pray for your blessing upon them. I pray for your peace in their hearts. I pray for your hope come to their life. Whatever might be the challenges they are going through, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, meet the challenges and help them to see that your mighty hand is able to sustain them and to take care of them. Lord, if it's your will, Lord, help us to have a very good week and a blessed, blessed week and to be a testimony to many people, O oh Father. Lord, bring us back again to worship you and honor you. Lord, till we meet again, bless us and guide us. Even if Jesus Christ comes today, may we have a blessed privilege to go with him and be with him forever and ever. This is my sincere prayer in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated.